going on, Refilters? I'm Jake Adams. Thanks for joining me for another video from the Refilter Studio. Um, if you haven't seen the last couple of videos that were put together by cameraman Evan, make sure to go back and watch those because I feel like they're really practical, uh, hands-on videos that we're really trying to channel. Today, we are gonna follow up on some promises that we made uh, about a couple weeks ago about coral grafting. So in the previous video, we grafted pieces of a blue lightning stag or uh, Derek's indecision to pieces of its old skeleton and that piece is coming along uh, very well. We'll show you that in a future update. But today we're going to graft some corals to themselves and we're going to trim down this giant Milka stylo. So I want to show you a little bit of what I want to do. This is uh, Worldwide Corals Yellow Tip Stag right here. Um, this is one of the older pieces here in the studio. Um, it's been growing kind of large and towards the center, arching over a couple of the acros behind it. Um, so we get the organ tort here, and I'm not sure, some unnamed Salago, Acropora Salago right here. And uh, it's definitely starting to shade them, but it doesn't have awesome shape, you know? It's got like this big trunk with like a little bit of branches going to the left and then another kind of flurry going up to the top. So I wanted to basically cut it down at the bottom and cut the top part and glue the top part down to its base. And then I'll take the other chunks and put them in some other tanks. And then we have a similar situation here with another Worldwide Corals piece. Um, this is a coral called uh, Joe Dirt, just Joe Dirt Acro. And I'll tell you what, so here you can see we've got a nice encrusted base and we have just a bunch of kind of like stagnant branches with a little explosion of growth over here. So I want to do the same thing as the yellow tip, basically cut it down at the base, cut this down, you know, right where the, the branches are really active and then glue that to itself. So we're going to get rid of all this inactive tissue and get it kind of reactivated in a separate system and then you know trim this guy down so he's no longer shading these corals behind him and so he has just like a better shape for the overall layout of the tank but speaking of the overall layout of the tank one coral i think it was in here while the tank was cycling is the purple purple milka stylo this was a tiny little nub that I literally dropped in here. Didn't even glue it in, I just dropped under the rocks as the thing was cycling. And this coral is just so hardy. It went through all the cycles. It was there since the beginning when I barely had any light on it. And um, it's just dominated this side of the tank so I can't really enjoy some of these other corals from the other side. So you can see, from this side, the coral is, again, very well encrusted. It's got branches everywhere, but it's you know really starting to affect the water flow. It's shading some of these moon corals here on the underside. And it's just generally out of balance with the look and feel of the aquascape on this aquarium. So um, once again, Evan's tank, uh, I wanna say six months ago, we did a huge hacking of a big Milka stylo in his tank. And um, we figured out that the best way to frag this coral is with a small hammer. Because if you try to just, you know, clip every single one, you're gonna make a mess and it's just not practical. It has a dense, dense skeleton, kind of like ceramic. It even makes a little tink sound when you hit it with the hammer. And um, hitting it with the hammer is just, just the go-to way to uh, cut this coral down to size. So I don't know how far I'm gonna take it, but as you saw in the previous video with the Red Dragon, I plan to take off this much and I ended up taking off so much more. So actually let's go around and take a look at uh, the Red Dragon. So this is the Red Dragon chunk that I had put in here. Um, so we reset it. I just put this chunk back on and right here is the encrusted base, which is still alive. So I assume those are fusing. And this is the um, Acropora LCI. It fell a couple times and ran into the bubble coral and so it's got some burnt tips but otherwise it's sitting there doing well. So um, I'm thinking we're going to do the acros first because those are going to be pretty easy and pretty straightforward and then we will uh, chip away literally at the purple milka stylo. Cool. All right so I'm going to start with the thin branching guy because I feel like he's going to be the easiest and this will be one of the first time we kind of do a, a through tank shot. I feel like I can get really good angle of this guy. Might be easiest if I take off what I want first and then cut off the rest. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Nice little active, colorful piece of coral. And then we're just gonna pop him here just for now. 
and then cut off the rest of the base. Oh yeah, got my finger a little bit, but not too bad. All right, so I'm just gonna drop him over here for now. All right, now same thing with the Worldwide Coral's yellow tip stag. I believe it's an Ostera. So I'm gonna cut off the piece that I want first. I'm afraid that the base is gonna be really thick, but I guess we'll find out, huh? And, oh, that wasn't so bad. That's actually kind of soft. Definitely the opposite of a Milka. So this is the piece that I'm gonna keep and re-glue down to its base. Very nice, active, growing branches. I think he can probably just go right there. And now, something I've been wanting to do for a really long time is cut him off at the bottom. Man, this is a he happy, healthy coral. And, oh, man, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna find out. I can't even see. Can I get around it? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so the way that worked is I actually pressed on the skeleton at the same time I was squeezing, and that allowed me to remove that. Oh my goodness, that looks so much better already. All right, so I'm gonna move a couple of these chunks where they're gonna go, and then we're gonna re-glue down the, the good pieces. All right, so I gotta say, I'm feeling a little bit lucky in how I was able to cut this off by kind of tweaking the colony and applying pressure with the cutters, and it gave me like a really pretty freaking flat base here. So after cutting this part uh, from the main chunk, um, I did go and cut a piece of the coral off to kind of flatten it out and to help encourage it to kind of grow away from the majority of the other corals. So hopefully it won't be a problem um, as far as shading the other corals for, you know, another half a year at the very least. I'm gonna put a generous amount of glue here. And this is actual, actual coral grafting. This is what it means. And I think that should be pretty good here. Oh yeah, I can totally live with that. I'm gonna enjoy that. So again, I like to dab, 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 then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Press and hold. All right, I think that's gonna buy me some time. I didn't exactly plan for it to be pointed leftward, but at least it's gonna give me a lot of room. And yep, yeah, it's pretty solid. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, Joe Dirt here. Although I did not flatten it out on the, on the, the saw itself. So generous amount of glue. And we're just gonna put it right back on its old base. So this one is not matching up quite as flush, but I think we'll be able to get a good connection here between the, the encrusted base and the active branches. Just get it really under, in between them. Press and hold. All right, hopefully that's nice and secure once it's cured. And uh, man, that's actually, that was the hard part of this actual you know, coral grafting experiment. And then the next thing we need to do is just simply bushwhack this Milka Stylo. I gotta say, I'm feeling a little bit lucky on how the coral grafting turned out. I basically just took away the less attractive part of the coral and reduced it down to the most attractive part of the coral and they matched up almost exactly how I'd pictured in my mind for literally months. I am gonna have to watch this Joe Dirt, make sure he doesn't fall into the Ghani and become coral food. But the next thing I really wanna do is just bushwhack this Milka Stylo. I mean, I don't even care how little we end up with because it's such a fast grower and I have it in a lot of tanks and um, if you've ever tried to frag this coral in a tank with with cutters unless you have very low flow it's quasi impossible so this has turned out to be our secret weapon against milka's fast growing milka stylo um, the only 
caveat with using the kind of the hammer method is you get a little bit of percussion in the branch. And so wherever you hit, you're probably gonna end up with like two or three frags. And the biggest warning I have with people swinging hammers inside of a tank is make sure not to hit the glass, you know? So, uh, you know, definitely be careful. I don't recommend this technique unless you have a lot of room and a really hard coral to, uh, to work on. So I'm not even gonna bother to grab the coral frags. They're just gonna rain down on everything and we're gonna pick them up as quickly as possible and put them in the tote. So well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Do, 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 do. Mm, mm. God, so I was so nervous the first time. It was actually easier to do it in Evans Tank because it was Evans Tank. <laughs> All right. Oop. Boop. There we go. That's a nice piece right there. All right, change of plans. After I whacked it once, you saw how the rock actually kind of shifted. Now I had some concerns of just about the coral slime and just, you know, disturbance uh, going all over in the water. So since this is on its own rock, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that whole rock out. And again, that's gonna give me a lot more degrees of freedom as far as accessing all the branches that I wanna chop out. So we're just gonna pull that whole rock out, take it over to the workshop and uh, chop it down. I certainly feel a lot better about having the coral out of the tank. That way I don't have to pick up all of the extra pieces and I can shape it up the way I really wanted to and probably make just some good cleaner cuts. Woo! <laughs> that was a, that was a, that's a chunker right there. I'm really aiming for like basically a bonsai. I don't want these to break too much, but there isn't gonna be very much left, I'll tell you what. Alrighty, let's see if we can get another one here. So here's that percussive breaking I was telling you about. Like just branches, just kind of... Oh, yes! Oh, damn it. Oh, maybe a little bit more than I wanted. I want to leave some nubs. Keep it going here. <laughs> you see how it broke down the branch, but not the rest of the way. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it because this coral grows back so fast. And I'm just gonna leave a good stump. And let's see if we can get a big chunk out off of this. All right, perfect-ish, perfect-ish. All right, so this is, this is what I'm left with. And uh, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go ahead and reset it. Just leave the stump because this is a fun coral to watch regrow from scratch. So look at all this coral right here. Imagine just how much calcium and buffer demands this actually places on the replenishment system of that tank. Now it's gone, we're gonna have more flow. Uh, Milka Stylo grows really fast. So I'm just gonna put this rock back in and uh, we'll be done. Oh, so the other thing I want to show you before I put this rock back is I pulled off two very small ball sponges. But other than that, you know, besides the coral that's growing all over it, there's just, there's not much sponge, not much valonia, no aptasia. Even the underside is like really clean. And I guess because of my lighting levels, I only have good pink coralline uh, growing on the other side. So we're gonna put this coral back in and uh, enjoy a really different look to the tank. Notice how little like detritus and stuff like is flowing off of this thing. And uh, you know, we don't clean it like crazy, but uh, there we go. And you're back. We'll probably do a little bit of readjustment here while we're at it. How's that look? Yeah, I can live with that. So I have to tell you, one of the most kind of challenging things about being a real 
like committed content producer when it comes to reef aquariums is this coral grafting thing. I've wanted to do that since before summertime. It's been like four or five months at least and just waiting for the right opportunity to be like, all right, let's fire up the camera and the lights and just show you guys um, how we do it. It's, um, it's a small price to pay, you know, to just be able to do this for you guys. But I have to say, I'm feeling a little bit lucky on how the corals came apart and how the corals came together. And I don't know why I completely forgot that the Milka Stylo was on its own rock. It was so much easier to hack it off in the workshop than to try to do it in here and just have bits of corals and coral tissue going everywhere. So there's more, you know, grooming and trimming that I want to do to this tank, but I don't want to have 15 corals with exposed tissue all at the same time. Um, not that I know it's going to lead to any kind of, uh, you know, recession or, or uh, RTN event, but I just don't want to do it all at once. So there's a few other corals here that definitely need a little bit of grooming. I would say the next up in line is probably this nice green polyp bird's nest. It's grown so much is kind of starting to encroach on the green stylo there on the other side. I could see myself like completely removing that and putting some of my other stylo forest strains um, and just concentrating them on this balmy. And uh, some of these corals here are starting to go a little bit leftward. So I know that at some point I'm going to have to add some water flow on this side just to kind of even out the growth form. You see a lot of corals uh, growing in this direction. But I hope you enjoy this kind of video. This is actually the kind of stuff I think I could watch other content creators uh, who all day long. Like, so if you guys have any grooming that you want to do with your reef tanks and uh, put those down in the link below, that's the kind of hands-on work that I just, I really get a kick out of seeing other people do that kind of work. So if you have any questions about grafting live coral to itself, I know people have done this before when they accidentally knock, knock off a frag and they didn't mean to, they'll just kind of you know, glue it right back on. But this is, um, uh, colony wide grafting and uh, I can't say that I've done it to this degree as much as just gluing a tip back on so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out we'll probably do like a collection video where we show off the blue lightning stag Derrickson decision growing on its base and how these guys have regrown so uh, thanks for joining me in this video if you have any questions about coral husbandry now's a good time to pop those down in the comments make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video of us actually doing reef stuff here at the studio. So thank you so much for joining and we'll catch you guys on the next one.